Sweetly, Lord, have we heard thee calling, come, follow me. And we see where thy footprints falling lead us to thee. Footprints of Jesus that make the pathway glow. We will follow the steps of Jesus where they go. Footsteps of Jesus. Are you following in his footsteps? 1 Peter 2 and verse 21 tells us that we are to follow the steps of Jesus wherever they go, and that includes suffering for him. Thanks for being with us, a part of this devotion again today. Say it with me, Psalm 118, verse 24. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Remember Hebrews 3 and verse 13, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. We've been talking about being devoted Christians. We're getting this from Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. I hope that uh, you have been able to listen to all of these. If not, they are recorded here on the uh on the Facebook page, and uh, Lord willing, they will also be made available on our YouTube page. Uh, if you'd like to look at that, it's uh, just go to YouTube and search Steel Church of Christ, S-T-E-E-L-E, and uh, you should find us there, no problem. And I hope that uh, you will look at and, and view all of these in this Devoted Christian series because we explore a different aspect in each one. Uh, as I said, we're taking this from Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. They, that is the Christians, the very first Christians, those 3,000 that obeyed the gospel on the very first day of Pentecost after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, after that fiery sermon of Peter's in Acts chapter 2, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking in bread, in, and in prayers. Now, if you want to, uh, I think in the, the last, the previous devotion to this, which I think is number three in this series, uh, we went through those terms about what they devoted themselves to, what they continued steadfastly in. Today, I want to add another passage of Scripture to this that, uh, to me, is very akin to this one, it comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58. I hope that you are familiar with uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. If you're not, I'd encourage you to read it today. It won't take you too long. There's 58 verses. It won't take you long at all. But 1 Corinthians 15, to me, is the most exhaustive passage in the New Testament about the resurrection. Now, who is not interested in the resurrection. I mean, it, we would be fools not to be interested in the resurrection. That's what we hinge our hope on. Jesus was raised from the dead. He gives, therefore, hope to us to be raised from the dead to everlasting life as well. Now, everyone's going to be raised from the dead, but the Bible tells us some will be raised to everlasting life. Some will be raised to eternal torment. And so we must make our lives right. We must follow in the steps of Jesus and not only be devoted to him, but remain devoted to him. So 1 Corinthians 15 is all about the resurrection. And so I want you to notice the very last verse in that resurrection chapter. Look at verse 58 with me. Therefore, now the word therefore means uh, because of the things stated previously. So when you see the word therefore in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 58, you know Paul is saying, since I have given you all this information on the resurrection, take that into consideration as I now make this statement. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 
Now, as I said, anytime you read that passage, you need to take it in its context. The context is the resurrection of the dead. And Paul gives a lot of information there. I, as I said, I just encourage you to read that again today, even if you've read it a hundred times. Read it again, and then read verse 58, because that's the punch. That's the power in the message. Because there is the hope of the resurrection, then do this. And let's look at what he says to do. Since there is a resurrection uh, of the dead, and since we have the hope of eternal life, what are we supposed to do? Well, he says we should be steadfast. Now, uh, you can see here this is uh, in the original Greek, this word, and uh, hedreos, or however you're supposed to say that. And what's interesting is that word means sedentary, by implication, immovable, settled, steadfast. So, you know, if you went to the doctor and the doctor asked you, well, how much exercise are you getting? And you said, well, I'm sedentary. Your doctor would be very upset with you, wouldn't they? Because, you know, that, that's one of the worst things we can do is just sit down. <clears throat> Pardon me. But there are times when we are supposed to sit down. And spiritually, when we get in Christ, we are supposed to sit down in Christ. We are to stay there. That's what this word means, steadfast. You are to sit down. The, the word, That word, the, the original Greek word anyway, is only used three times in the New Testament. Let me give you an example, <clears throat> pardon me, of another time that it's used. Uh, over in Colossians chapter 1, beginning in verse 21, you can see an example of this word used, where Paul says, And you who were once alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight, if indeed you continue in the faith grounded and steadfast and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. Now, this is one of those if statements in the New Testament that, uh, you know, if you are a follower of John Calvin who taught the perseverance of the saints, the impossibility of apostasy, once you're saved, you're always saved, and there's nothing you can do to be lost, this is a passage that, would have to be dealt with because this says otherwise. The Colossians 1 and uh, verse 23 says, you will be uh, saved if you continue in the faith. And not only that, not only if you continue in the faith, but if you are grounded and steadfast. And that's the word that we see that, that we're examining here in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, steadfast. That is, you have sat down in the faith. You, you have planted yourself there. And I suppose that uh, the next word that is used here in 1 Corinthians 15 is akin to uh, being steadfast, but maybe is even more powerful, adds a little more punch to the message because he says, be steadfast, but then he also says, be immovable. Now, that is a different Greek word, as you can see here. Uh, Emetakinetos, however you say that. And it means immovable, unmovable. So you don't just sit down. You sit down, and then you remain immovable. We used to play a game uh, when I was a kid called King of the Hill or King of the Mountain. And uh, we'd find a little mound of dirt or, or some high space, and somebody would uh, be chosen to be the king, and every, it was everybody else's job to knock them off, to push them down and get them off of there. And, and the way that you remained the king was you took a wide stance, you got yourself balanced up there, and anybody that came up, uh, you would not allow them to push you. You would use all of your might to stand firm. Well, this is the kind of language that we're talking about uh, in, in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, that you, when you are in the faith, that you stay there. 
and you don't allow anything to move you away. It's kind of interesting because this word immovable, at least the Greek word that that's translated from, this is the only occurrence of it that I know of in the entire New Testament, 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 58. So sit down, don't let anybody move you uh, from the faith that you have gained in Jesus Christ. And then uh, he finally says there, always abounding in the work of the Lord, always abounding. Now, this word abounding is an interesting word, parasueo, and to and it doesn't just mean abound. It means to super abound in quantity or quality, to be in excess, be superfluous. So when we, when we translate that abound, I don't know if that really is enough because it doesn't just mean to abound, but to super abound. Now, if the Lord looks at my life as a disciple of Jesus, does he see an overachiever? Does he see someone who is not just a Christian, but a devoted Christian who is abounding, and not just abounding, but super abounding, learning more of the gospel every day, being more faithful every day, being more devoted every day, sharing the gospel with others more every day, every day increasing, doing more in my own life and how I interact with others Is that the life that the Lord sees, and is that the life that the world around me sees? Because that's what Paul is saying to do in light of the resurrection in 1 Corinthians 15. Sit down in the faith. Don't let anything move you from it, and be an overachiever, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Now, you you determine if a thing is the the work of the Lord if it has the Lord's name on it, the last two sermons that I did these past two Sundays were about uh, the name, the importance of a name. and The, the uh, title of those was, Is There Anything in a Name? So uh, take a look at those. But one of the points of those two sermons is that something in order to be in the Lord, to be a part, a work of the Lord, has to have the Lord's name on it. It has to be by his authority. So um, you determine that by... Scripture. It has to be, have the Lord's name on it from Scripture. So always abounding in the work of the Lord means what the Lord's put his name on. And then notice the last phrase that he uses there, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And I like how some of the later translations say your labor is never in vain in the Lord. Two things about that. One is that because of the resurrection, your labor is never in vain. I was talking about in Bible class Sunday morning how sometimes it's discouraging to, you know, set up Bible studies with people. They go a little ways, and then they decide that's it. They're, they're not in for the long haul. They, they've, they're just not going to continue, and it's discouraging. And one of the sisters in the class reminded me, yeah, John, but you don't know. That little seed that you planted, it may come to fruition uh, days, months, years later. So, uh, you know, don't doubt the word of God. It's powerful. Hebrews 4 and verse 12, sharper. It, it's powerful and living and sharper than any two-edged sword. So re- remember that. It, it, and so in light of the resurrection, any labor that you put into the work of the Lord is never going to be in vain. And then uh, also keep in mind you have passages like Isaiah 55 and verse 11 where the Lord says that my word will never return to me void. It will always accomplish what I sent it out to do. So be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is never in vain. Devoted Christians, let's pray. Holy Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the blessings in Christ, the hope that we have through Jesus, and we pray that you'll help us today to be more devoted to you, to increase in every way. Help us to study your word more. Help us to have more faith. Help us to display that faith in the way that we interact with others. Help us to grow in our love. Help us to grow in mercy and and in all the attributes that we should possess to be Christ-like. Help us to make positive change today in our lives and to be a light to the world around us and to be salt to the world around us. 
Father, we pray that we will use each day in a way that shows we've made progress and that we'll devote ourselves more and more to you. Please forgive our sins as we confess and repent of them and as we forgive those who sin against us. And finally, Father, when you're finished with us here, may we come to be with you forever is our prayer in Jesus' name, and amen. Hey, thanks for uh, thinking about these things. I hope that 1 Corinthians 15, 58 will come to your mind throughout the day today. Everybody, have a great day. Then at last when on high he sees us our journey done. We will rest where the steps of Jesus stand at his throne. Footprints of Jesus that make the pathway glow. We follow the steps of Jesus where